Good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. Today is Thursday, the 3rd of November. And uh, today in the church, we are remembering Richard Hooker. Richard Hooker was a major Anglican theologian of the Reformation, uh, around the same time, or just after Martin Luther and John Calvin. He died in the year 1600. He's a priest, a teacher of the faith. And so today, we're remembering Richard Hooker was, a, was an architect, as it were, one of the main Anglican theologians of the 16th century of the Reformation period. Let's pray as we start this new day. It's a rainy day here, a uh, rainy morning, rainy night, but um, we thank God for giving us grace to see another day. Let's pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, May the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we ref reflect your glory this day, and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The heavens bear witness to your wonders. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. The assembly of your saints proclaims your truth. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. And the collect. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship. In the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
and the collect for um, remembering Richard, Richard Hooker. God of peace, the bond of all love, who in your son Jesus Christ have made the whole human race your inseparable dwelling place. After the example of your servant Richard Hooker, give grace to us, your servants, ever to rejoice in the true inheritance of your adopted children and to show forth your praises now and forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right, our psalm this morning is Psalm 15, 1, 5. Psalm 15. Psalm 15, first the refrain. Through the greatness of your mercy, I will come into your house. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may rest upon your holy hill? Whoever leads an un uncorrupt life and does the thing that is right. Who speaks the truth from the heart and bears no deceit on the tongue, who does no evil to a friend, and pours no scorn on a neighbor, in whose sight the wicked are not esteemed, but who honors those the, who fear the Lord. Whoever has sworn to a neighbor, and never goes back on that word, who does not lend money in hope of gain, nor takes a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never fall. Through the greatness of your mercy, I will come into your house. And our prayer, Lord, lead us to our heavenly home by single steps of self-restraint and deeds of righteousness. Through the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, read the meditation for Psalm 15. <clears throat> uh, Psalm 15. Who gets to draw near to God? Those who speak true words, verse 2. But who do so in love, verse 3. And generosity, verse 5. Those who are transparent, honest, and faithful to their word, not always changing their minds. If we deceive, vilify, and flatter, if we make empty promises and overblown claims, we cannot expect God's presence in our lives. This standard not only challenges us, but also reminds us we can go to God only through his grace. No one but Jesus ever lived with perfect integrity. But because he is our savior, we can go in, God, in we can go in to God through him. Amen. All right, let's leave that there. Our our Old Testament reading this morning, uh, we are in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 3. We're going to read from verse, from verse 1 to 13, Daniel 3, 1 to 13. Sorry, 1 to 18, 1 to 18.
King Nebuchadnezzar had a gold statue made. 27 meters high and nearly 3 meters wide. And he had it set up in the, pla in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then the king gave orders for all his officials to come together. The priests, governors, lieutenant governors, commissioners, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all of the other officials of the provinces. They were to attend the dedication of the statue with which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. When all these officials gathered for the dedication and stood in front of the statue, a herald announced in a loud voice, People of all nations, races, and languages, you will hear the sound of the trumpets, followed by the playing of oboes, lyres, zithers, and hearts. And then all the other instruments will join in. As soon as the music starts, you are to bow down and worship the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Anyone who does not bow down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. And so, as soon as they heard the sound of the instruments, the people of all the nations, races, and languages bow down and worship the gold statue which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. It was then that some Babylonians took the opportunity to denounce the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, May your majesty live forever. Your majesty has issued an order that as soon as the music starts, everyone is to bow down and worship the gold statue, and that anyone who does not bow down and worship it is to be thrown into a blazing furnace. There are some Jews among you, among you, there are some Jews whom you put in charge of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who are disobeying your majesty's orders. They do not worship your God or bow down to the statue you set up. At that, the king flew into a rage and ordered the three men to be brought before him. He said to them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is it true that you refuse to worship my God and to bow down to the gold statue I have set up? Now then, as soon as you hear the sound of the trumpets, obas, lyres, zithers, harps, and all the other instruments, bow down and worship the statue. If you do not, you will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Do you think there is any God who can save you? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered, Your Majesty, we will not try to defend ourselves. If the God whom we serve is able to save us from the blazing furnace and from your power, then we will. But even if he doesn't, Your Majesty may be sure that we will not worship your God and we will not bow down to the gold statue that you have set up. They stop there. All right. So the three young men, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, decided that they will not bow before uh, the statue or worship any false god other than the Lord God. Um, just to remind you, their names are Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Those are their Jewish names. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were their Babylonian names. Anyway, we'll leave that there. We know the story. Um, and um, and we, we, we will come back to that, the Lord willing, tomorrow. Let's move to Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 3. Chapter 3, from verse uh, 1 to 13. Revelation 3, 1 to 13. Uh, just to say that just one thing, uh, maybe maybe the, 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 three, the three young men 
who refuse to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's statue. They have this faith in God. If the God whom we serve is able to save us from the blazing furnace and from your power, then we will. You see, um, the, the, this idea that God, um, God is able to save them from the furnace. And, the, and so they have no problem um, not bowing down. But if he doesn't, you see, there is that but. Even if God doesn't save us from the fire, we still will not bow down and worship your God. Um, in other words, we are willing to sacrifice our lives for the God in whom we believe, for the true God. And, um, and we know he can deliver us. We know he, 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 can, he, he doesn't, we don't have to burn. We know God can deliver us. But even if he doesn't deliver us, we have determined that we will stay true to him and we will not bow. That is, that is faith, Sister Zumba. It's a faith in God, uh, knowing that whether God delivers us or not, we are going to remain faithful, remain steadfast to the true God. Revelation chapter 3, from verse 1, uh, 1 to 13. To the angel of the church in Sardis write, This is a message from the one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know what you are doing. I know that you have the reputation of being alive, even though you are dead. So wake up and strengthen what you still have before it dies completely. For I find that what you have done is not yet perfect in the sight of my God. Remember then what you were taught and what you learned, what you heard. Obey it and turn from your sins. If you do not wake up, I will, I will come upon you like a thief. And you will not even know the time when I will come. But a few of you there in Sardis have kept your clothes clean. You will walk with me clothed in white because you, you are worthy to do so. Those who win the victory will be clothed like this in white, and I will not remove their names from the book of the living. In the presence of my father and of his angels, I declare, I will declare openly that they belong to me. If you have ears, then listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write. This is the message from the one who is holy and true. He has the key that, that, that belonged to David. And when he opens a door, no one can close it. When he closes it, no one can open it. I know what you do. I know that you have a little power. You have followed my teaching and have been faithful to me. I have opened a door in front of you which no one can close. Listen, as for that group that belongs to Satan, those liars who claim that they are Jews but are not, I will make them come and bow down at your feet. They will all know that I love you. Because you have kept my command to endure, I will also keep you safe from the time of trouble which is coming upon the world to test all the people on earth. I am coming soon. Keep safe what you have so that no one will rob you of your victory prize. I will make those who are victorious pillars in the temple of my God, and they will never leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which will come down out of heaven from my God. I will also write on them my new name. If you have ears, then listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. So two, two more churches, um, Sardis and Philadelphia. Um, Sardis is the, the, that church that Jesus says they are really dead or asleep and they need to wake up. Um, Jesus says they have a reputation for being alive, even though they are dead, which is always striking, sisters and brothers. 
Here is the church, the, the church of Sardis. Everybody thinks they are a living church. They are a lively church. They are a vibrant church. On the outside, this church looks very much what's happening. You know, it's a place where things are happening. It's the living church. It looks, it's vibrant. It has a reputation for being alive. But from Jesus' perspective, this is a dead church. This is a sleeping church. And, 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 and sisters and brothers, this is a reminder to us that we don't, we don't judge churches or each other even on appearances. Uh, the, the, the fact that a church or a community of believers have a reputation for being alive doesn't mean that they're alive. Um, on the outside, they may look vibrant. They may look like things are happening there. But Jesus, the one who sees, the one whose eyes are like blazing fire, who sees beneath the facade, beneath the pretense, beneath the, the, the outward show, he sees that this church is really dead. He says, wake up and strengthen, uh, and strengthen what, what you have before it completely dies out. Rekindle the fire. In the, in the embers, the embers um, of that that are going out, you see, uh, and so Jesus is calling up, and there, there are some who are still, who, 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 you know, there's always a remnant in every church, the few in Sardis who have kept their clothes clean, they haven't defiled themselves, they haven't, they haven't, you know, they they live righteously, they 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 live true devoted lives to God, but there are, but the church itself is a dead church, is a, is, a, is a church that many people think is alive, but is actually dead. Philadelphia, Philadelphia is, it <clears throat> has, has lots of good qualities, but again, there are some there who, um, uh, that, that do not follow the, the, the path of Christ. And so Jesus says, I, I have given you an open door, uh, which no one can close. It's a door of opportunity, a door to enter, uh, I am putting before you, I'm, I, I, am, I am laying before you a door for you to go through. Uh, it's opportunities, doors of opportunities, opportunities for the gospel, opportunities to speak the gospel, opportunities to spread the gospel. He says, I have opened this door in front of you. Listen, as for that group that belongs to Satan, those liars who claim that they are Jews but are not, I will make them come and bow at your feet. There were, there were these clearly groups of people in the community who were making problems for the church in Philadelphia. Jesus said that they will, they will bow in humility to, to, to the people there. They, they will come. They will come in contrition and recognize their, their sin. Um, let's leave that there. It's, it's a lot. As I said before, um, the best way to understand these churches, I think, I mean, apart from doing a Bible study, which we can't do in the morning, is to ask ourselves the question, if Jesus is writing a, a letter to our church today, what would he be saying to us? What would he commend? What would he condemn? Um, and, and what would he, uh, what reward would he offer to us? Uh, there, oh, there's always a reward at the end. Um, those who overcome will be given a new name and they will live in the city, the new city, the new Jerusalem and so on. What would Jesus commend in us and what would Jesus condemn in us? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for giving us a new day. We thank you for your mercy and grace this fresh, this day, this fresh day in our lives. And so, Lord, we pray that you'll help us not, uh, to, as we reflect on the, the, the church in Sardis, a church that had a reputation for being alive but was dead, sleeping church, a church that was inactive from your perspective, and yet from human perspective, it looked, a vi it looked vibrant. It looked like things were happening there. Lord, we pray in the first place, give us grace so that we have eyes to see, not just on the outside,
but to discern the inside as well. Not just to, not just to look on outward appearances, but to judge deeply from the heart. As the Lord help us not to be that kind of people who we only look on the facade, the outside, but uh, and use the outside as a means to judge others or churches. But also we pray, Lord, that uh, you will help us to, 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 to be a, a church that is a church of integrity, a church not just, not just a church that looks good on the outside, but in fact is, is in fact alive, not just to appear alive, but a church that is truly alive in you and fully awake and the fires are burning in the embers. And so, Lord, we pray that we will not be a church like Sardis. We pray that, you, like Philadelphia, you will open a door for us, uh, for all your, your people here in our community, a door of opportunity where we can go enter through those doors to proclaim the good news of Jesus. Let everyone know about who Jesus is. Give us those doors of opportunity, we pray. We pray, especially as we come up to the Christmas season and we drop leaflets in our community and, and, and we pray, Lord, that you'll open the door of opportunity so that others will know who Jesus is through the efforts, through our, our means, the means by which we seek to bring attention to the gospel. Uh, this Christmas in our own neighborhood and in our own community. And so, the Lord, we pray, grant us your grace to be, this, to, to be a church that proclaims, uses, the, enters through the door of opportunity, use every opportunity to proclaim the good news of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear, we pray this morning, O oh God, that you... Hear us and remember those who are on our hearts, those who are sick, those who are in pain in any way. Lord, remember them. Remember our sister Daphne. Remember Hannah and Sue. Remember Muriel and David and others who are on our hearts and those who are suffering this morning. Remember... Um, Veronica, who's celebrating birthday, I think, uh, yesterday, um, celebrated her birthday yesterday. Remember her, I think, 80 years. We thank you for those many years, and we pray that for your special blessing upon her. As so, Lord, we pray uh, for your people everywhere, but especially those in our own community and those we know, all those who are following even now on, on this prayer. Lord, you know all our needs, you know our, all our, our concerns, you know our heart's desire. And so, Lord, hear the prayers of all our hearts today, we pray, and uh, grant us your mercy and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the, the end of war. We continue to pray for God to intervene in the, in the war in Ukraine. And ask that God will, Lord, we pray that you will bring peace to the lives of those people. Pray for an end to that war. An end to the, all the conflicts and wars in our world, especially that one in Europe. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ be with me, Christ within me. Christ behind me, Christ before me. Christ beside me, Christ to win me. Christ to comfort and restore me. Christ beneath me, Christ above me. Christ in quiet, Christ in danger. Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and his all-sufficient grace to sustain you today, sisters and brothers, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>